Good morning. Good morning. Uh, is my mic fine? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. So this morning will be my very first full-length sermon before I go off to college this August 15th. Let me tell you, it was not easy to come up with something to talk about. All right. <laughs> I was going back and forth, um, deciding, do I want to talk about a passage? Do I want to talk about something that's been in my mind? But I decided to talk about uh, a words in a song that I really like. It is called, So Will I by Hillsong United. You might know it. You might not. In the first stanza, it says, God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. This song gives, many, gives God many names, one of them being God of creation. Turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. Mm -hmm. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Mm -hmm. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds, and every winged bird, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and, every, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant-yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, according that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Here, it states that God created everything. He created you. He created me. Everything. Everything we have is from God. Amen. You get it? Yes, sir. <laughs> we are so lucky to have a God who decided to give us all this. But that's not the least of it. In this stanza, it also says he was there before the beginning of time. Psalm chapter 90, turn to Psalm chapter 90. Psalm chapter 90. In verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Mm -hmm. God was and will always be there. Amen. We can't mentally comprehend that God has no beginning, but that is okay. He created the cosmos and the galaxies long ago, maybe before the earth was made. It was so beautiful how massive the universe really is, and the universe has no end, just like God. In the second stanza, it says, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. What is so amazing is that God can turn darkness into light with just one word. Amen. According to Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 28, it says, Starting in verse 28, it says, And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs, so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, Send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs. And behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Mm -hmm. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Here we see Jesus, also God, since they are one person, healing two men from demon possession. All Jesus has to say is go, and they leave right away. All right. Jesus here is turning darkness, which are the demons, into light, which are the healing. Amen. This is so amazing. He didn't even have to say go. He could have just thought it, and they would have left. Mm -hmm. I just find that very amazing end uplifting mm -hmm. and moving on to the first half of the refrain it says and as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath the planets form if the stars were made to worship so will I the next part of it I can see your heart in everything you've made every burning star a signal fire of grace if creation sings your praises, 
so will I. Going back to Genesis we read earlier, remember how it said God created everything? Mm -hmm. Imagine a hundred billion galaxies, each a gazillion yards long, at bare minimum. Isn't that insane? Mm -hmm. God did all that. All he had to do was just say a phrase, let there be, and it happened in an instant just for him. God truly is amazing. Looking into the last sentence of the first refrain, creation is singing his praises. All of creation. Imagine that. Everybody around you is praising God and singing to him. That is what heaven is going to be like, and I can't wait. Amen. It gives you goosebumps just thinking about it. Going into the fourth stanza, it says, God of your promise. You don't speak in vain, no syllable, empty or void. The writer gives another title to God, God of Promises. In Deuteronomy 7, Deuteronomy 7, starting in verse 9. Starting in verse 9, it says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Mm -hmm. Here we see an example of one of God's many promises. He promises to love us as long as we love him and keep his commandments, and that is very powerful. Amen. The reason this promise is so powerful is because in Titus chapter 1, in Titus 1 verse 2, it says, It says, God is a promise. Did I read that quickly? Sorry. It says, God does not lie. A promise like that to us by a being who cannot lie is much more powerful than a promise by a friend or even a family member. Amen. God's promise gives us closure, knowing that while we are still sinners, he loves us. Amen. In the fifth stanza, it says, For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. This here says that God can tell inanimate objects or even nothing at all to do something, and it happens immediately. In Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, starting in verse 19, It says, Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. And then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea. Let the wa that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. 
So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled into it. The Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. All right. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Amen. Here we see God telling water to move, and it does. This not only proves what happens with good faith, but also proves God, God's power. With good faith, God can make anything happen. This is why good faith is so important. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, I know there's a lot of reading, but I figured I'd rather let God talk than me do most of it. In Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 23, it says, And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this? that even winds and sea obey him. In this passage, God in Jesus commands the storm to subside, and it does. Mm -hmm. Another example of God's majestic power causing anything and everything to follow his will at any given time. Amen. Moving on to the eighth stanza, since the last stanza is more of the same as the previous ones, it says, If the stars were made to worship... So will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. Do you notice the parallelism here? Mm -hmm. Most of the stanzas say, if da-da-da-da-da, so will I. This is very important to notice, since it hints at the message of this song. This is saying that if we look around, we can find countless ways to serve God. We see a brother in need, help him. You see an opportunity to spend time with someone, do it. You see an opportunity to share the gospel, do it. There are many, many ways to serve him. Looking into the ninth stanza, it says, God of salvation, you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. If you love this parable as much as I do, you know what's coming. Starting in verse 11, it says, And he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many, yeah, not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens. Lost my spot, sorry. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens 
of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of the father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has won, has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you in the heaven, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I may celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, he has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Amen. This is such an amazing story. No matter what we do or what we have done, Jesus waits for us to return as long as it takes. When we return to him, the angels all around are rejoicing for you. Amen. And Jesus welcomes you back, no strings attached besides to remain faithful. However, this does not discourage remaining strong in the faith. However, however, this does mean that you are never lost forever, and you can always come back. One might say, Landon, why don't you just remain lost and come back whenever you feel like it? Hold up. So you're telling me that you want to take advantage of God's grace and his mercy and come back whenever you want to rather than whenever he wants you to. I mean, I might be over speculating, but I don't think that'll go over well with God. (laughs) I say to you, it's not worth it. Matthew chapter six, verse 34. Matthew six, verse 34 says, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Like it says in the verse, tomorrow is never promised. You could die in your sleep tonight and still be lost. You can't repent at judgment and Jesus say, it's all right, come back. That's not how it works. After you die, you're done. No forgiveness after death because that defeats the purpose of why you're faithful in the first place. To love God with all your heart means to remain faithful and do his works until he takes you away. Do not have any regrets at judgment. Mm -hmm. Unto the next stanza, it says, On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. Starting in verse 19, 
it says, For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it? For what credit is it if when your sin when you <laughs> that's a tongue twister. When you sin and are beaten for it, you endure. But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. Amen. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Amen. Here it says Jesus was alone on that cross. He took all that torture so we could have eternal life. And we had the audacity to laugh at him, spit on him, and leave him there all by himself. What a horrid, horrid thing for us to do. A normal person would have said, forget it, I'm not helping these people. If he was normal, humanity, or even all of the earth, would most likely be extinct. Mm -hmm. But because he loves us, he said, forgive them, they know not what they do. This is the greatest gift we could ever ask for. Now we approach my favorite part of this lesson. What is the purpose of this song? What is the singer trying to tell us? This can obviously be taken different ways. But my interpretation of this song is that there are countless reasons why we serve God and countless ways he has been good to us. He gives us life. He clothes us. He feeds us. He gives us homes. He gives us fellowship with one another. Shall I keep going? Mm -hmm. Thanks, I will. He gives us air to breathe. He gives us brains to think. He gives us hearts to love. He put his only son on the cross for the things we've done. In return, we put Jesus on that hard, cruel cross. Jesus died for us. So why do we serve God? Because of Jesus and because of love. Let's love each other daily, and thank you for listening to my sermon. Amen. Amen.